So I went into the school and I was already doing fairly well in my Japanese classes, but I, I'm really aiming to get really, really proficient in Japanese. And one of the things that I noticed is every day I'd learn something in class and I'm like, oh, that's how you say it, okay. And I'd go use it later with my host parents or out when I'm trying to find something in the store. And I had those kind of aha moments every single day. Specifically, we were learning Kago, which is honorific language. Mm -hmm. And I used to watch the news all the time with my host family and all of a sudden I understood like 20% more because I understood, oh, it's just that simple you know, verb, but they're using polite language and I understood a lot more news because of it. My Basically, my way to um, scale my pro progress was my parents, my mom and my grandma, were going to come to visit me in Japan and my grandma's Japanese. And my mom was Japanese, uh, she knows Japanese as well. So before I went, my mom's Japanese was better than mine. When she came to Japan and I saw her again, I was better than my mom. And she couldn't understand half of what I said anymore. Even in Japanese classes, you know, strictly Japanese, only Japanese, three and a half hours a day. And that accumulates over five days a week. And then, you know, after a certain amount of weeks, you're getting a lot of, you're hearing a lot of Japanese. Plus all this stuff that you're just absorbing. Right, and even just outside, you can listen to train announcements, and I can, like, repeat those but now because I've listened too many times. But, and then... So do one. <laughs> he loves to do these around campus, like he'll just randomly okay. say them. Okay. ni <laughs> What was it? I can't remember the second part. It's like, abunai desu kara, hiro sen no uchigawa ni otachi kurasai. Please stand behind the yellow line because it's dangerous. Momentarily, a train's gonna arrive at station number one. You get a lot of writing and reading practice here in the States, but they don't get very much practical talking yeah, experience. And I remember like the first three weeks, I was just sitting there like, oh my gosh, I can't possibly stay in this class because like everything was so over my head. Hmm. But simply because you're there all the time and everything is described in Japanese, like you don't really get any other help in English. It's just all very direct, which, you know, immersion process. Coming back, I felt like I had a solidification of a lot of the stuff I had learned. And there was a lot of stuff that I hadn't really been sure on going to that coming back, at least it's a little bit more. I have a lot of trouble remembering things unless I have that kind of over and over beat it into your head with a hammer sort of thing. Going to Japan, for some reason, when you are by yourself and no one else speaks your language, like especially when I had my um, homestay, I would sit at, you know, when I was studying at night, I'd be by myself and it would just be me and no one else was speaking English or anyone really influencing how I thought it anymore. And it somehow, just being in a different country, being able to operate in a different language really gave me a ton of self-esteem and confidence. And it's always been with me ever since then now and it's, I don't think it'll ever go away. It's just, you seem to mature a ton. And I volunteer in class a lot more, I participate more. That's true, yeah. and then, like even this video that we're making right now, I wouldn't even, I'd be a lot more shy about it, but yeah, I it, just seems, yeah it just seems like you overcome an like obstacle. It, it definitely, my time abroad made me more open because I had to be more open to doing stuff with people I didn't know. Simply because of the fact that it's like, the, even the people that I did know, I went over to Japan with five people that I knew from classes here and like I, I didn't I didn't necessarily do stuff with those people before, but I feel I do now more so than I did. I guess just just being more open to doing something that's outside of my comfort zone was one of the things that I got from going abroad. And I would definitely say just interacting with more international students. I mean, you're surrounded by mostly Chinese and Korean students. I mean, I didn't really know much about those cultures, quite frankly. And just hanging out with them and seeing how they interact, you do learn a lot. And it makes it a lot easier to meet other people in that instance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was it like American adjustment for like living there? Like, I know a lot of companies bring oh, yeah. businessmen and they don't speak any Japanese and they'd have to bring their whole families and you couldn't be a person that... Or helping them. Japanese businessmen get ready to go back to, or go over to America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah be yeah. the sort of cultu cultural translator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Teach people how to balance. I'd like to teach. Um, I had the opportunity to take Japanese at my high school and I really, really think that 
foreign languages are an important thing. I'm probably thinking about being a teacher or something there. I don't want to actually have that as my profession, but just as a footstep to get back to Japan. And eventually I want to get good enough at Japan Japanese that I can hopefully try to work for Nintendo, like so Nintendo cool. Japan or Nintendo America, so I can be the international relations type person, translate if we have to go someplace. And that's basically what I'm hoping for, but we'll see. I don't want to be stuck in a teaching job. It wouldn't be bad for a couple of years, but beyond, I would prefer something like business, working with international students. Um, but really, I just I love Japan, so I really just want to get back there and be involved with the people. Is my big drive. Mm -hmm. Say no. Thank you.